a storyline from one of the soaps and get... In a lava. Shut it. Yeah, go on. Oh, I'm Danny <laughs> Well, there, I think they're supposed to be the uh, the Mitchell brothers. Mitchell brothers, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so aptly, we're off to the square where it seems young Abby <laughs> has been lying about the two details of her parents, Tanya and Max's separation, and is caught out at her school parents' evening. Things haven't been easy on her. Yeah, we've been doing our best, you know. Yeah. Keeping an eye on her. Both the girls. Beginning of term, the dinner lady found Abby crying in the toilets. Did she tell you? No, she didn't. Well, things weren't very good back then, so... But they're better now. Yeah, much better. Yeah, we're working on it. Can I just say how refreshing it is to see such a positive attitude from both of you? And all things considered, Abby's weathered the storm extremely well. She's a credit to both of you. And now that you're getting back together, I see no reason oh, why... excuse me. Now we what? Well, now that you're getting back together, that is what Abby's been telling everybody. Mm. Uh-oh. <laughs> so this poses the question of how best to explain separation and divorce to the children. Can ignorance be bliss for kids, or is it best to be open and be honest about what's happening with their parents' breakup? It happens all the time, mm. doesn't it? And it does. It happened, it's to, a... ha happened to you when your kids yeah. were very young. They were. They were four and seven when me and Shane were first, you know, when it all went horribly wrong. And um, it was a really difficult one because you want to protect them, but at the same time, you have to... You have to treat them, although they were four, I mean, the four-year-old, Jake, at the time, was just worried about who was going to buy his videos. <laughs> sort of That's all he said. <laughs> Who's going to buy me a video? <laughs> and, um, but, you know, really caring child. Um, but for Shane Jr., who was seven, he was at that age. A little where, bit more aware. Yeah, a little bit more aware. Um, I think what I really tried not to do was put any blame on anybody when I was telling them. You know, I was trying to tell them you know, as much as you want to, because I was heartbroken at the time and I wanted to tell them exactly what I thought of the father, but I thought best not. <laughs> um, because it's not fair on them, no. and the only ones actually you screw up at the end of the day are the kids. And I'd seen it happen with friends who'd been through the same situation, and I remember then thinking, and I w we were really happy then, but thinking, if that ever happens to me, I'm never going to do that to my kids. I mean, they literally were dropping the kid off at 10 o'clock at night. No, you have him. Well, I'm going out. I can't have him. Well, I'm not having him. And this little 10-year-old is standing there going, nobody wants really? me, you know, and really screwed him up for a long time. And all they were doing was trying to hurt each other by course, using the yeah. child. And the only one they were hurting was the child. Do you think that it was easier because they were younger? Do you think it would be more difficult if they were, say, the ages that they are now? Well, I think in some respects... In some respects, it's easier when they're younger because as long as their lives don't change, they're actually quite, quite selfish, selfish when yeah. it comes to it. Do you mm. know what I mean? As long as their little routine isn't going to change, they soon adapt. I think what happens is when kids get older and they get to teenage years, people think, well, they're old enough to understand. Mm. And I don't think they are. I think you still have to be really careful with teenagers. Don't they don't want every you to offload and go, your, you dad, to your dad did this, your dad did that. It's not my fault. It's his fault. You can't lie to them. You can answer questions and you can be honest and say, this mm. happens sometimes in a relationship. It doesn't mean, you know, we don't love you. We both still love you. But some people want to hurt him or hurt the wife by it offloading it on teenagers mm. and going, oh, well, they're old enough, they're to, old understand enough to understand and they're not. It still you know, screws them I mean, up. I mean, luckily, my, my parents are still together. God <coughs> knows how, I have to say. But, you know, they, they, they do adore each other in their, in their little way. But um, <laughs> it's, it's like uh, when my mum used to have a drink, she doesn't really drink now, but she, when she used to have a bit of a drink, and she would always get her fag on and go, I hate your dad. <laughs> right there. And I used to think, oh, for God's sake, here we go again. You know, he's go, well, you married him. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's your marriage. I don't, I don't, want, I don't want to hear, I know, but I hate him. But do you not think, is that not, is that not really quite common, her. especially with, well, with older kids, that the parents <clears throat> have a great relationship with them and, and everything's very, you know, they're almost like friends, but then... They make that mistake they of crossing the line that they are talking about this child's father or their daughter. And I can't, I can't bear it when I've been in the room with people, you know, usually the women, because obviously that's who I've, you know, mostly been friends with, and the kids are there at whatever age, and they're, they're, they're slagging the partner off to me in front, in front of the yeah. child. And you can see the distress in the child. We're all guilty, we're all guilty of doing it now and again, mm. saying, oh, yeah, father mm. or something like that but I think I think if you're you, divorcing it's a hundred yeah, times yeah, yeah, worse. Yeah. It is a hundred times worse. It, I think it, the thing as well is that it is the easiest thing to do is to slag him off and you do have to literally bite your tongue. Mm. But what I've noticed is I haven't you know kids 
are very astute in the way that as they get older, they work it out for themselves. Mm. You know what I mean? You don't have to slag their Try dad and sway off or their sway thoughts. their thoughts or make them love you more, mm. you know. They'll work it all out for themselves and they'll deal with it in their own way and just be honest when they do ask a question. You know, I always try to be honest. I mean, I couldn't be 100% honest because I couldn't. Well, you can't. <laughs> but I have been around, you know, rowing parents who do, you're right, use the kids as, mm, as you know, just hard. ammunition against mm. each other. And I think, I look at them and I think, you know, where are the children here? It's not the children, it's the grown-ups oh. just being like kids. And I just think, grow up. You know, and all credit to my mother. My, my father left when I was very young. Um, and to be honest, I don't really remember much about it. I don't remember asking, or, you know, maybe I did. I don't even know what my mum said, so it obviously hasn't had that much of an effect. But also, I do remember, for the whole of my life, I'd never really heard my mum say anything negative about my dad. That's brilliant, though. Not once. And, you know, I know my mum's attitude was, because I used to have to prise it out of her later, you know, come on, tell me this, tell me that. Mm. Um, why didn't you, you know, why didn't you ever say anything? And she just said, well, because you... I had to leave you lot to make up your own mind. Mm. You know, there was no point in me trying to influence you because if you do that, she always thought if she, she did that, you would drive us towards But although him. she didn't, like, slag him off in front of you, did she... Did she big him up in front of you? Did she go, oh, no, he wasn't? No. Or did she just not talk about just him? Just not talk about him See, at I all. made the like, mistake of... Anything. I didn't tell the boys everything, but I actually protected him in some respects a bit too, too much, well. So as they got older, all of a sudden, he absolutely was on this pedestal. And I think I, I was kind of... I did get to a point where I thought, I need Hang to tell them just yeah. a little snippet here yeah. of actually <laughs> what did happen, you know, because... To, I'd built it up so much that it was like he hadn't done anything wrong. Mm. And then I thought, you're the bad guy. maybe I'm mm. the bad guy now, yeah. yeah. And well, I wasn't like Jackie Brambles. Brambles. No, no, I know you I weren't. Oh, well, I think Eastenders. we all know the Is same thing. Yeah. Yes. Well, Max and Tanya, get your acts together. There's a little girl at stake. <laughs> we'll take a short break, but when we return, we'll be catching up with actor Todd Carty in an exclusive chat about those health scare headlines. Back soon. <laughs> Final guest has been making headlines lately when he dramatically collapsed on stage during the middle of a performance of his latest play, The Business of Murder. It was initially feared that he'd suffered a heart attack, but here to set the record straight, please welcome Todd Carty. <laughs> Huh? No. Well, no. surgery has a lot to be answered yes, for these days. Yes, and you it? don't look like a man who's just had a heart attack. Well, no. thank God, if I had a heart attack, I wouldn't be here in your company oh. today. Um, I did have a, a funny turn, as the actress said to the bishop. I did collapse on stage, but um, it wasn't a, a heart attack. Um, you know, it's like a tour. You work very hard, and I built up an ear infection. And when you're on tour, I forgot all my medication. Oh. So I remember it was about... I only had ten pay, I only had ten minutes to go, <laughs> oh. which was unfortunate. But I remember yanking my ear. You know, when it really hurt you, it started to inflame. And then all of a sudden... Ten minutes, the, the floor started to open up, my head oh, yeah, went you down. Lose your balance with you the lose your balance area. and all that kind of business. And I, I try to hold on, so I was supposed, I was basically fainting for ten minutes. I wanted to get round to the sofa where I was mm. supposed to be in ten minutes, <laughs> and I was just coming out with all gibberish. And uh, <laughs> Sally Ann, who I work with, said we do that every night anyway, so it didn't make any difference to me. But so, <laughs> kind of overacting in a way. Overacting yeah. or uh, underacting and oh. not really making any sense and sort of <laughs> not really getting the eye line or the focus of, so they knew something was wrong. Were you worried though? I was very, it was in front of loads. I, li I like the show to go on. No, but yeah. did you know it was yes, due to your ear infection? No, you I, I, but that, so I didn't know, but bad. I knew that that was in, in flame and I thought that might have, um, you know, accelerated it. So, so Todd, where did the heart attack thing come from then? Was that a just a media that, thing? That was media. I, th I think the only thing, my agent spoke to um, the press and they said, I can assure you it's not a heart attack, it's not a heart attack, it's not a heart attack, the next day it's a heart attack. So you know. <laughs> the wonderful press sometimes. But I bet that worried a lot of your friends and family. Well, it family. did even yeah. more so, and that accelerated it even more. But I suppose, to be fair to them, if I'm in an audience here, and I lie down, and I sort of, I, I black out, and the old famous thing, ladies and gentlemen, the show can't continue, <laughs> pull in the tabs, and is there a doctor in the house? You know, the last thing I wanted to do was a Tommy Cooper, do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. God, God, rest, God, God rest his soul. So they may have thought it and interpreted it that way. So um, you can't blame the journalist for that completely. But then, of course, you know, the phone has been 